Right after a, a week break, we're back with Six Nations action. It's week three to Six Nations and uh, three more games to look forward to. And once again, we're with uh, our main man for the Six Nations, John Newcomb. John, it all kicks off at, at Murrayfield at a quarter past two on Saturday. Scotland, many reckon they should be going for three games from three, but they're taking on a France side who and now are the outright favourites for the Six Nations and are most definitely the team to beat. Yeah, obviously everyone from an Irish persuasion will be hoping that uh, Scotland can do their Celtic cousins a favour by tipping up uh, France's Grand Slam ambitions. Um, France go there with one change, uh, nothing too disastrous for them. I know Villiers uh, scored a hat-trick in round one, but uh, it's only a little bit of a minor rejigging in their back line with uh, him out with a cheekbone injury. So they've got Dante to uh, run up hard through the centre and uh, they've pushed the existing centre Mofana out to the wing. Uh, with the same pack, with just one change to the back line, they've got a settled look about them. They're three games in now, building up momentum. Scotland at home, never easy. They haven't won there, I think, since 2014, in the Six Nations at least. But I really do fancy them to uh, get the job done. There's always Wales away for France to slip on, uh, slip up on for Irish supporters and uh, England at home. Uh, I just don't think the banana skin will be at Murrayfield this weekend. OK, France hot favourites. The handicap is seven points. Are they going to be good enough to cover that handicap? Yeah, I think Scotland will make it tough for them in the first 40. Uh, but as the game wears on and the respective benches come into play, France is definitely looks a lot stronger. You take three key forwards out of the Scot Scottish squad. You've got Roy Sutherland missing. You've got uh, Jamie Ritchie missing. And uh, now Matt Ferguson at the back of the scrum. He was man of the match in the round one win over England. So take those three out and you're starting to look not necessarily threadbare, but definitely weaker, and the French pack is pretty awesome. So I think eventually that will tell them Scotland and uh, France will go on to win by perhaps close to double figures. Maybe not pushing the 10-point mark, but uh, I reckon they'll just about cover the handicap. OK, and you've been doing well on the try score front, in, in particular when France have been playing. So who do you fancy to, to get a try on Saturday? Well, I've just been crunching the numbers actually earlier and... Um, other than wingers, who are the obvious pick to be a try scorer, all the other positions are fairly well evenly matched, but there's been three tries scored in the Six Nations by a prop. No other position has scored more, and they're normally fairly log odds. So uh, I'd, I'd have a look at one of the French props. Uh, Cyril Bay got one of those three tries early in the tournament, so uh, he might be worth a look at again. Yep, at a big price. OK, after that, we're going to concentrate on England against Wales. Obviously, England's are over, overly struggling. Wales bounced back after their opening week uh, weekend defeat. But England are, are expected to win this if, if the betting is correct. Yeah, and history suggests they will. They've won the last five against Wales at Twickenham since that disastrous 2015 defeat at hands of Wales when Bigger got 23 of the 28 points. They'll need another massive performance from Bigger again. He was impressive against Scotland, limping his way through uh, uh, in that game. That 2017 uh, victory scored 15 of their points and They'll need a similar contribution from him, plus a bit more. It's whether they have got that bit more. Uh, I'm still not convinced about the uh, the Welsh attack. I don't think they've got enough tries in them. The players inside the wingers aren't distributing the ball in time and space, hence why Louis rees Stammer has struggled. Uh, so I don't think Bigger's penalties will be enough to trouble an England side that has got tries in them. The handicap is 14. It's a lot, yeah. or is it? I think it's about bang on. So... I think we got a winning margin right, didn't we, in round two? Yeah. I'm going to go for England by 11 to 15 points. I'll tell you one thing, though, that uh, was really interesting that I read earlier in the week. Uh, Wales have only been in front at half time once in 25 in the last 25 meetings with England at Twickenham. So I really do fancy England to win. And with that stat in mind, perhaps you'd get a little bit more for your money if you went England at half time, England at full time. Yeah, sounds like a good bet, especially on the stats. And then we, we move on to Sunday in Rome, 3 o'clock. Ireland hoping to bounce back. They didn't do an awful lot wrong against France, but uh, they didn't get the result that they needed. But they're, they're hot favourites, and, and the handicap is 40 here. What are you thinking? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot to cover, isn't it? But mm. I think the weather forecast is decent. Uh, they've got a referee in the Georgian official who refereed Ireland versus Japan, and that was a very flowing game. I know things can be different in the Six Nations, but he clearly had an intent to uh, let the players play. Uh, and also, this Ireland team has got multi-dimensions to it in an attacking sense, whereas perhaps previously 
they rely too much on the pack and uh, pragmatism. But as, as you know, they've got plenty of uh, strike runners, plenty of threats all over the park, and they'll back themselves, I think, to get the tries and the points that they need because points difference could be really important. If, like we mentioned earlier, France do slip up, they've got a couple of more difficult games after the Scotland one, then um, it's whoever gets uh, the most points against Italy that could be the factor. And, and France didn't exactly blow Italy away in their first game. So if Ireland can uh, perhaps get towards the half century mark, uh, I think they'll cover that 40 points because Italy rarely get into double figures, it seems nowadays. OK, obviously, if Ireland are going to cover the 40 point spread, they're, they're going to go in for quite a few tries. We're, we're hearing Johnny Sexton in might return, but obviously they have plenty of options when it comes to try scores. Yeah, Hugo Keenan's been a bit quiet on that front, hasn't he? But I think there'll be plenty of space for him to uh, weave his magic and uh, I'd be looking to him. And maybe Gary Ringrose has had a good, has a good Six Nations so far. He, he, he's popped up with the odd try here and there, but he could probably do with upping his uh, try scoring ratio. And uh, uh, he might be worth considering as well as uh, Keenan. 